whenever you have things thrown apart, don't say you're going to do it later. Just get them clean and clean them while they're there. Oh. What is up, guys? I'm Kyle at Fortune, back at it with the Samurai, and today we've got the actual housing and all the parts cleaned up, and now it's time to deal with finding and cleaning those surfaces that need to be touched up. Now, when I was cleaning everything, I gave myself this little station and I put down some cardboard to make sure it could soak up all of that heat producer that I was going to put on there. But the way I was doing it was using that punch like I showed in the last video, just scraping everything out. And then I'd go over it with a wire brush and a flat razor blade to try to scrape anything off. And if it needed cleaning more than that, I just sprayed some degreaser on it, set that part to the side, and then started on a new one. And then by the time it was ready to put heat greaser on that next part, the previous one would get rinsed off in the sink. And then I'd use the wire wheel brush on it, clean it off with a paper towel. Uh, it worked out really well. I got everything pretty clean. Honestly, the best way to do it is a bead blaster. I did it the hard way and it wasn't too bad. Um, it took a while, but everything's clean and ready for paint. Now, I'm not too much of a snob about paint, but the way I like to do it is to go with the semi-gloss black paint. For whatever reason, I just don't like how gloss black paint looks on trucks. It just looks too shiny. Flat black just looks too cheap. To me so I like to go in the middle and do that semi-gloss black the one downside to using it is it's not available in all the stores because I think most people just go with the gloss black now when you're painting a bunch of parts that have machine surfaces that you don't want to get painted or like on the axle housing itself the uh, part where the differential third member meets up with the housing and also the axle seals on the end of the axle tubes you obviously don't want to get paint in there there's no reason to do it it's just going to make a big mess but the shapes are kind of weird with mask. So I'll show you some tricks I've found to get a nice clean mask job around that differential circle and any other machine surfaces that you don't want to get paint on. One of the tricks I've learned along the way is putting the masking tape on and then if the edge has a nice 90 degree angle or sharper, you can just run a flat edge around the masking tape and then it peels off really easily. But if you don't have a sharp edge, another thing you can do is get a brass hammer and just kind of tap all the way around. And then it leaves this nice smooth edge where you can just peel the tape off. Another trick is not overlapping the tape too much. You can see I didn't overlap it that much right there, but if you do it too thick, it's hard to cut through and it wants to kind of just scrape off, which doesn't really help you get that clean look on there but this axle is getting ready for primer and we're gonna throw some semi-gloss black paint on it, which is my go-to paint. We've got some of the parts torn apart here and got a little bit of primer on them and some of that semi-gloss black paint. You can see I used that same trick to get these uh, masking tape edges nice and smooth. We've got a couple coats on here already and then we're gonna flip some of these parts and do the rest. I like to throw a couple of medium coats of primer on whatever the bare metal is just to make sure it's getting uh, really a, a good contact on there to make sure there's a lot of primer for the paint to stick to. In this case, I make sure I got plenty of primer on there and then I get about three coats of uh, black paint just to make sure I had good coverage. I think the best way to paint parts is by hanging them up. That way you can get like 99% of the part and then whatever, wherever the wire or the rope or whatever you're hanging it with was touching, you'll just have to hit that up later. I thought I was going to be able to knock it all out on the ground because I was going to be out of town for a little bit. When I got back, I would just flip it. But as I was doing it, I realized, you know what, I should just hang this up and then I'll be able to knock it out real quick. The one thing you have to worry about is your overspray, whatever's in the background. Or like me, there's a lot of white uh, pieces around me. I'm painting with black. So you just gotta watch out. I had a big enough area. That was
So the tape job worked out. We've got some pretty clean lines on here. Not that it's a huge deal, but if we're gonna paint it, at least might wanna make it look good. Take this one off and see how it looks. This one came out pretty good too. But these ones look like they came out pretty good as well. Here's how the axle housing turned out. You can kind of see what I mean with this paint. It's not shiny and it's not flat. It kind of just looks like how it would come from the factory. I also added on these ball gussets on both sides to help strengthen those areas. I didn't show that in my previous video. So we've gotten most of our parts cleaned up, primer painted, and here are the paints I used. Rust-Oleum self-etching primer sealer. This stuff works awesome, makes all of my horrible welds and everything look nice and smooth. Then this is the semi-gloss black I like to use. And then I've only used this on a few of the accent pieces, but this Rust-Oleum gloss red looks really good up against this semi-gloss black. All right, we've got the majority of the parts that needed to be painted, painted. It is now time to move on to the next step, which is gonna be messing with the differentials. You know, if there's one thing I don't feel comfortable doing just quite yet, it's messing with differentials. I usually take them into the shop. I'll have a professional install a locker and some gears for me. But in the Samurai here, we're only putting in the locker and it is a lunchbox locker, meaning we're only gonna be replacing these spider gears in here. And this carrier, the housing for the locker is gonna stay the same. So we're not gonna be redoing the gears. I feel comfortable taking this one on. We'll see. It's probably gonna be its own video. I've determined that we are going to do a Spartan locker in here. I was thinking of some other options, which I'll talk about in another video, but I'd love to hear some input from you guys, some people that have actually wheeled with these setups in their Samurai, because my number one concern this whole time has been strength using these stock axles. Well, that's about it for this part of the Samurai build. If you like what you saw and you want to see more of the Samurai getting built up, make sure you go to my channel and hit subscribe. That way when I come out with new videos, I'll show up on the homepage and you won't have to go looking for them. Hopefully these little tips help you out and uh, looking forward to continuing this build. Thanks for watching.